please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Amnesia, The Dark Descent, thoughts. Video game thoughts. Now, I suppose I will start with going into why the, 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 the lack of consequence to, to both death and loss of sanity. As a reviewer, Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's terribly <laughs> arrogant. I I wanted to experience every aspect of the game, so of course I tried to get Daniel to lose his mind. And early on playing it, I kept not really quite getting him to lose his mind. Like he, I, I did start to see some hallucinations. And, you know, it did become a little more difficult to properly control Daniel because of this, but it didn't completely... Part of it is that the making progress in the game does restore the, you know, the, the sanity. And like I mentioned in the review, I wish that the game had a setting where, you know, when you start a new game, you can, you know, say, you know, should sanity res be restored by, uh, yeah, by, by making progress, yes, no, no will make it more difficult. Because I did not light any candles, and I did not use the lantern, I, I went by the, the blue hue of, you know, the, yeah, simulating the, the sense of touch. And it didn't really do anything. Finally, I just, I, I went to, like, you know, I, I googled, you know, amnesia, the dark descent, like, you know, effect of loss of sanity. I found a YouTube video that showed distinctly, and, and the, the description box also says, you know, this guy just waited in the dark until he passed out and then woke up again. And I read on like the, what's it called, the Amnesia Wiki, you know, Amnesia Wiki uh, something, that you lose health by passing out and then come back. And of course, you're more vulnerable to enemies. But really, this is, uh, there is perhaps too little consequence from this, because really the only reason if if you sort of abstract from it, if you don't let the game, if you don't lose yourself in the game, then this by itself is not that. Yeah, it, it doesn't really provoke a the desired response in the player, which is avoid darkness, avoid disturbing. Yeah, you know if the thing is that the the. The, uh, the, the sanity is a great feature, but the use of, of you know, the, the hallucinations and these, you know, the, the unpleasant sounds, these things are already present in other survival horror. First that springs to mind would be Silent Hill, and there, they're not to encourage the player to deal with the sanity, the, you know, they, they, they might be rushing the player ahead in Silent Hill. They might be saying, you know, run to the next area, quick, get out of the other world, you know, or kill this enemy to, you know, to deal with this. And in this, I, I, can, I applaud the idea and the, the fact that you don't just, you know, you don't take a shot of adrenaline and then you're fine, you know. You, you have to stay in life and you have to stay there for a while 
for it to gradually come back. And it's not like a meter on screen, you know. I love that they did away with the HUD. But there is still too little consequence, I feel. And death, frankly, is even worse because you don't even necessarily lose progress by death, which is kind of the... That's typically what survival horror does, and in, in general, you know, video games where you can die. You typically lose progress by dying, and you have to restore to the last save point. And this is especially, you know, if, if you are playing a survival horror game with checkpoint saving, then you lost all you did since that checkpoint, and thus you avoid death. But in this game, you might just resurrect where you died, the enemy might even be gone. So really, death can be a more... It can almost be the solution if you can't find a good place to hide. I mean, I didn't... I didn't really intentionally use it in this game. I, I always tried to hide or run away from the enemies, but if I was caught or found, then it didn't do anything, you might say. I, I didn't lose progress. I didn't have to do stuff over because I died. I, literally, the first time it happened, I really, I was very surprised. I, I came back to life the exact same room that I died, and I was like, well, I've, I know I picked up a tinderbox since I last, you know, since I went through a door, you know, the autosave. So, it, not just a door, but a loading door, if, you know, a new area. And this, so I, I, I checked, nope, I still did have that tinderbox. Nothing had changed. And so, so yes, there is there's no loss, there is no consequence to dying. And in part I understand it, because it does remind you that you were playing a game when you have to load progress, you know, mid the game, but... I, th I, I hope they come up with a different and better solution next time. I, I don't think this is the, the best way to do it. I, again, like I said in the review, if you make the decision to lose yourself to the game, it does pay off. You are like just completely, and you know, I, once I did, you know, after playing for a couple of hours where I was like, you know, nothing's happening from the sand balls and found out that nothing really would happen, I, I made up my mind to say, okay, this is not how I'm supposed to be playing it anyway, so I will, I will play as the game, as, as the developers ask, don't try to beat it, just, you know, absorb the, you know, be absorbed by it. Finally put on the headphones instead of just, you know, I'm sure my neighbors were quite happy <laughs> that they didn't have to hear this, this sudden increase in volume when, when enemies, and, and yeah, I, I did really, yeah, for, for the rest of it, except for when I was killed and then resurrected, the game didn't lose me, you know, the, the, there was no... Yeah, I, I enjoyed it throughout. And I, I definitely had a much more satisfying experience. Well, I, I do, do definitely want to say that to if, if anybody played through, you know, at least part of the game and, you know, they didn't lose themselves. So once I did give myself to the game, once I started lighting the torches and using the lantern and taking the, the sanity more seriously and, and not trying to, you know, that was a far more satisfying experience and I never, I never went back on that. I never regretted it and I never, uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to say about that. Now, I do not want to give away any spoilers for Penumbra, but I do like that the story... There are similarities, but they're also different. I, I like that Alexander really was, 
a very... He was a fleshed out character, as was Daniel. They both did horrible things, but they did them for a reason. And you, you might even go into who is the more deserving of, of salvation, of mercy at the end of the game, which is very much a decision that you make. Now, the... Yes, I suppose I'll briefly go over the, the three different endings. You have the option of following, you know, Daniel's former self's suggestion and killing Alexander. If you knock over the three pylons, I guess, the... I guess it's that you let in the shadow. He's, yeah, he's almost done opening the portal back to his home world, and if you, you know, stop the ritual, then the shadow can enter. And it kills Alexander, because he was the one who, you know, was, you know, he, he was doing all those, all those experiments, the rituals, to hold off the shadow. Whereas Daniel has now helped the shadow reclaim the orb. From, from Alexander, and yeah, so he, he comes, excuse me, and, and Daniel feels that it was, it was justified, and he, he leaves Castle Brennenberg, and yeah, he, he feels he has satisfied his, uh, yes, and it, it's sort of, you know, you, you get these glimpses into his childhood where he was bullied and made to do things that he didn't, you know, that he really find horrifying. There's, there's that loading screen thing of, you know, what am I doing, he thought, as he struck his victim with a rock. You know, so, and, and it, it goes into this, you know, can innocent be corrupted to do something horrible? Which I'll, I'll get more into. So, he sort of, he feels vindicated. He feels that now it is okay that he tortured all the, or not okay, but he feels that he has stopped Alexander, who caused all this pain, not only through Daniel, also through, you know, also before Daniel came to Castle Brennenberg. That, that is one option. Another option for the ending is that Daniel just lets it all happen. He lets Alexander create the gate and go through it. This this apparently can be triggered at the cell as well, if you don't break open the cell, if you just let the, you know, the shadow consume, the, the you know, as, as far as I understand it, basically the shadow is invisible and huge and leaves behind this fleshy mass that, you know, organic matter that's clearly somewhat living or, or such, and some of which can hurt you. And, yeah, if you stay in the cell, or if you just let Alexander complete his ritual, and in either case, he will thank you for your sacrifice. So he's, he's not saying, wah ha 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 Saturday morning cartoon villain, I am finally, you know, I'm going to take over my world, of course! No, he's, he, he wanted to go back to his home land where he was banished from, which he feels was unfair, as he reveals in, you know, his diary excerpts, which I love that they have a different source for those than the, you know, the Daniels are just on, on paper with a pen, Alexander's are these strange, otherworldly, you know. Now, the final option is to do as Agrippa asked you, and throw his head into the portal once it's opened. Both Daniel and Alexander will be consumed by the shadow, now that the portal has closed again, and, Alex and, and Agrippa convinces Weyer, Johann Weyer, who already traveled through, as, as far as I recall, through these, the, the, the portal, you know, the portal that he created a while back, and 
uh, yeah, Agrippa convinces Vire to help Daniel, and you know he starts out floating in in a void, and you know he's you know Agrippa says you know thank you for your your help, and we we will you know it will be all right, you know, and what I love about these three endings is that I mean I I read a a like a walkthrough that that you know calls them these these different you know in, in survival horror you know, you know the good ending the bad ending the, the, you know the special ending you know so it's you know good ending is if a gripper gets thrown through I think bad ending is if Alexander goes through and revenge ending is the one where Alexander dies and Daniel walks out of Castle Brennenburg. This, I, I can understand, you know, wanting to, to separate them, and I'm not disagreeing with the choice of, of terms for it, but what I love is that here, you can really look at them and say, well, which is the good ending? Which is the, the ending that it should? I love Silent Hill, but there are some times when the sort of the, the endings are a bit more black and white and the, the stories to an extent also. I do want to clarify, I, uh, the, the, the second game, fantastically, you know, open story that you can really in interpret, but anyway, I, I, I love that here it's sort of the player, it's, it's similar to Deus Ex, you, the player, chooses what is the right out outcome, what do I want for an ending to this story, and it's, it's not a sort of, what's it called? It's, it's not just wish fulfillment, which is horrible thing in fiction. It's there. There are different outcomes based on sort of who do you think deserves to live, or what do you think should happen? Do you think that the the you know is is Alexander the true evil one? Should Daniel be able to walk away having conquered someone who got him to do something horrible? Is are, are Daniel and Alexander essentially equally guilty? You know, but although it does end with Daniel getting some kind of help from Agrippa, and considering how much Agrippa hated being kept alive by Alexander, it's probably not just that. You know, it's probably something much more tolerable. Or do you feel that the that Alexander should be allowed to go home, and Daniel deserves to be consumed by the shadow. And I, I can honestly see arguments for all three. I, I really, I, I'm, I, I love when when stories do that. When you can see all the different sides of it. I mean. And, and yes, I, I want to get more into the, the characters. Alexander's drive is that he misses where he came from. He feels alien in this world. There's that great, I think it's a di one of his diary excerpts, where he's like, you know, at the Black Eagle, you know, the, the meeting, and they're like, you know, these, these guys are just, you know, <laughs> discussing and just yelling at each other, and he's like, you know, Man, this is such and of occasionally one of them will notice me and be and, and shudder at the thought. They they know that I am the only Alexander of Brennenburg. They know that you know they, they remember seeing me as as children, they remember seeing me as young men. Now they are middle aged to old and they know that I'm still the same person. They can't tell anyone, but they know. And you know, the the age by anguish, not by not by time, you know, he, you, you can somewhat understand 
at least. And Daniel's horrible deeds are for fear of his own life. Alexander does not really fear the, the as, as far as I understand, the shadow is not at Castle Brennenburg at all until Daniel enters Castle Brennenburg. And he, as Daniel realizes that inviting, that, that Daniel will be able to help him complete the, you know, the, the ritual, which is indeed as far as I understand what he's doing right from the start of the game. You know, he'll telepathically contact you sometimes. You know, he realizes that something, somebody's moving around doing stuff because the shadow's getting closer. Daniel, is that you? You know, stop what you're doing. Or have, have you changed your mind? You know, is, and so, so yeah, he, you know, Alexander uses Daniel to, to help get back to his own world. And you, you could say that it, you know, he manipulates him definitely and he corrupts Daniel, but he also does express guilt uh, over such. And Daniel, he, it's, it starts out with Daniel sort of, he's, he's too curious for his own good. He, he, you know, he's, he finds in Algeria the orb, and because he doesn't know how to, you know, wield that power, he destroys the orb. And then he starts trying to find out who could possibly, you know, yeah, how, how is this, you know, how is this real? How, how could this thing just, you know, he, he keeps having nightmares because of the orb, and you know, it leaks madness, as it were, puts it. And he, you know, tries to go around to different people, and he's also like, this couldn't have actually happened, you know, I'm like, I, I thought I was choking, suffocating within, you know, mere minutes, uh, how could I have been in there for hours? Which Herbert writes that he was, and these, these things, and so when, once he realizes that the shadow is killing these people he came into contact with, and Alexander says, I can protect you, he doesn't think twice about it, or, you know, he, he's, he's a little bit, you know, worried at first, but he does come by, and once he is faced with killing these people, so torturing these people, repeatedly using amnesia, if, drink potion to be able to torture them again, he is actually telling himself this is okay because this needs to happen, you know, I'm cleansing the world of evil, as many people have told themselves while doing something horrible, whether they were driven to themselves by some kind of psychological or other people had them do it by manipulation, by threats. And, yeah, he's, he's, he is focused on saving himself, where Alexander was never really worried about his own death, because he is this eternal being, you know, ex except for the, the shadow at the end of the game, but that's only because of Daniel, Daniel's vehement action, you know, he's, he really applies himself throughout the game in order to bring the shadow to Alexander. And... And, and prevent Alexander from, you know, traveling through the portal before the shadows. So, so, so yeah, you, you weigh these two against each other, this man who knows what he's doing and makes an informed decision to hurt others in order to restore himself to his, to his home, or this you know, this, this, this boy, essentially, who, out of fear, tells himself that what he's doing is okay because he feels that what he's doing will save himself. So it's, it's a very good... And, and Agrippa... There, there's also... Agrippa is in part... He's, he's curious about the 
the world that Vyer already traveled to and that Alexander is on the way to. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's a very... I, I love that you can sympathize with, with all three. Now, I must bring forth the cell phone of notes to... From, I, the, the spheres of, or the, the orbs, they, they're obviously very powerful and there are these hints that even if one doesn't try to, they, they sort of, they are evil in nature by being nearly unwieldy you know, nearly unwieldy for how powerful they are, and power wielded by those who don't know how to wield it is inherently evil. I thought that was a very... it's, it's a good theme for, for the game, and... yeah, at the end of the game, you're, you, you are using an orb by the end of the game, and what do you do? Jack, what do you do? You know, do, do you... No matter what you do in the inner sanctum, you know, somebody will die. You know, that it is it is not possible to save everyone. So you you have to choose who to save and who to allow to die, or as you might say kill directly in some cases. Now, I like the, the thing of the, the vitae, the, the you know, life force, I suppose you would say, you know, torturing the, the, you know, people and animals, and as he concluded, it's better to torture people, because they realize what's about to happen. They understand it more than animals do. I, it's, it's somewhat, it's like the superstition about, you know, human sacrifice to facilitate something of importance and something of power. And the blood, or, or the, the physical bodies, the physical forms of people, you know, holding something powerful, be it good or bad, which can be released by death or bloodletting, but you know, by actual blood sacrifice. You know, that, that is, yeah, it's, it's a popular idea in you know, superstition and religion. Now, I, yes, I, I like the, you know, the, the, this sort of you know, the magical artifact, the, 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 the orbs made, made me think of, you know, Hellraiser's lament configuration with this sort of, you know, curiosity dooms man where it's... yeah, if, if you had left well enough alone it would have been fine, but the orbs are inherently dangerous to the curious and the ignorant. Now, the... The... You know, when, when you first hear that, you know, Alexander talk about a vaccine, you're like, why didn't you give it to me? Is it, you know, but then you do find out a little later that maybe it was good that Daniel himself had to, had to deal with it with the, you know, temporary vaccine that, that doesn't kill him, you know, that, that doesn't have a risk of, of killing him anyway with, uh, yeah, the, the, what was it, the, the contaminated blood, I think, it was, I anyway, yeah, the, the blood that you inject into yourself. Now, yes, I, I quite like the, that, that, several things in the game do not turn out to be what they at first appear to be. The, you know, when, when you first read about, you know, having to kill Alexander, you know, at, at first you might be thinking, 
what, what could he possibly have done that deserves a death sentence? And then as you read about all this torture and sacrifice, then you start to understand, and then you gradually realize, fairly late in the game, that Daniel was part of this, of this torture. He helped inflict torture upon these, you know, eventually not even, you know, anything resembling criminals anymore, just regular people being grabbed and brought to because they need that much of the, the vitae, so, you know, and, and at the same time you, you do find out that Alexander, you know, he, again, he's, he's not entirely unsympathetic, certainly, you can somewhat understand why he is doing this, and he's clearly himself conflicted about it. Now, but, but yes, the, uh, another example of that is the, the shadow seen by the, the, the organic matter, which spreads. When you first see it, you're, you're disgusted, and it's like, you know, I love that actually one of the first places you see it is if you try to leave the castle. If you go up to the door out of the castle, very clearly, you know, you, you try to grab the shadow blocks. You, you know, I, I, is that the shadow entering the castle, perhaps? Or is the coming, coming back into the castle, maybe since, you know, since the last of the Vita, you know, rituals, since, you know, per perhaps that signals to the, the player, once we know what's going on, if, you know, upon replays or such, that this is when Alexander begins his ritual to open the portal using the, the, the orb which he grabbed from, that's at least how I understand it, from, from the guest room where Daniel was staying. It's, yeah. You know, because he realized that Daniel wouldn't go along with it anymore. Now, the... Yes, the, the, the shadow, at first you, you know, at first you're just disgusted by it, then once you have to touch it, you realize that it can actually hurt you, and you're thinking, you know, this is something horrible, this is... But then, as you progress, as you understand the shadow further, you realize that it's not looking to hurt Daniel necessarily, it's just, it's, it's a cosmic guardian, guardian of the orb, ensuring that the orb doesn't hurt those who don't know how to wield it, because as we've learned, it is very, very dangerous and very difficult to use properly. It, it, or it's difficult to use properly and it's dangerous if used you know, improperly. So it, it, you know, it kills the different people that were in contact with the orb pieces after Daniel came back from Algeria. And the... What's it called? The... Yeah, yeah, I, I love that you, you realize that it's, you know, it's following you, it, it spreads through the castle as you progress through the castle, and it's because it's basically following Daniel, getting closer to Alexander. Yeah, I, I really, it's, it's a great, and, and without it being unsatisfying as well, the, the game doesn't, the story doesn't eventually just boil down to, no, 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 you, you misunderstand everything, it was all for good. You know, I, I find that that can be unsatisfying as, as conclusion. I, I, we don't find out that Alexander and Daniel and the Shadow have done nothing that, you know, can be considered absolutely horrible and, and beyond redemption but they all have reasons for it, you, you might say. And, and as far as I could tell, the, the shadow, the, the, you know, the, the mass of the shadow also killed one of the monsters, one of the, you know, brutes or servants, which as far as I 
understood, they, they were actually Wilhelm and the others, you know, they, they you know, or the brutes are, and, and they were like, you know, yeah, he used the wine to transform them into these monsters. And then there were the others that were the servants, which, you know, Daniel described as skulking about. And we don't know if they were already like the monstrous ones in, in cloaks, as we find in one of the short stories, or if they became monstrous closer to the events of the game rather than the backstory. Now, yes, I, I quite like the, the telepathic communication of Agrippa and Alexander. At least Alexander's was, must have been telepathic because he can talk to you from very far away. Agrippa only talks to you when you're very close to him, you know, once he's, when he's, you know, a, a body there, but his lips don't seem to move. So I really did get the sense that he was, yeah, I could be wrong. And now the, actually, I suppose that is everything. But yeah, I, it's a fantastic, deep story that really makes you think about the different things. I suppose I, I could go into the story of Justine somewhat. I don't particularly have anything to say about the short stories. Just, I, I really like them. I really like how they expand upon the story of the, yeah, of, of the game itself. I like J Justine. I, I figured out that the, the girl you were playing as was Justine, you know, that, that she had sort of created this, you know, thing for herself. I, I did realize that before the end of the, you know, of the DLC, but I did not figure out everything, I must admit that, and I really like this thing of, you know, they, she kills her father after all this, you know, that's, that's revealed in one of the, I think it's one of the loading screens, and she you know, people are sent to diagnose or to, to help her or to stop her in some way. A doctor, a priest, and a policeman. And she captures all of them and imprison, imprisons them down there in, in the basement under her... <laughs> like she says, you know, us, us nobles, we, we are not bound by such petty ideas as right or wrong. What we do is right, because we are noble. It, yeah, it, she, you know, she's sort of testing her own conscience. She's trying to see if she still has some humanity to her. Will she take the easy way out and hurt or kill people, or will she apply herself and, you know, properly solve these puzzles and save them, you know, I am alive, you know, it's, and why, why does she test herself? Because that's all she's ever known, that she should be tested. Her father tested her until she killed him, you know, trying to figure out about the psychopathic tendencies of her. And that also brings up the excellent question, was it his objective detachment from her. He was not a father to her. He was a psychiatrist to her. He was the the removed. You know, it, it's it's made clear from from him. You know, I, I shouldn't have done. It. I I regret it. I please forgive me, Justine. You know, I should not have. You know, is is that what makes her a psychopath, or were the psychopathic tendencies always there, and he merely fail to fully understand them or harness them through through his testing, you know, to control them, put a stop to them. In in a way, it did come out of 
a love. He, he saw that there was something wrong with his girl, and rather than shun her, or force you know, her to, be, to endure the treatment of someone else, he tried to understand so he could best help her. He tried to, and, and at the end, you know, it's, it is this thing of the, the, any, any parent will worry, am I doing the right thing for my child? There are so many choices to make and so many ways that it could go wrong and it plays on, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's that theme that he realizes too late that his choice was the wrong one. He should not have been her psychiatrist, he should have been her father. And, and at the end of the game, we still don't know, would that have made things any better? Would her having a father, even if not a mother, would that have helped her to be, well, yeah, not a psychopath, you know? Now, the, and, and of course the three monsters that hunt the that hunt Justine, the, the suitors, she the I, I don't remember I think it's a racquetball player, a violinist, I don't remember what the last one is, I'm afraid. But the the I think the last one was an artist and he was willfully killing cutting in order to please her. You know, she she had them torture themselves for her because she was, you know, desirable and she, you know, how much will you do for me? And, and also going into this, this theme of love and obsession and, and the destructive nature that love can sometimes possess. If, if, certainly if, if unrestrained love can be rather destructive and the and and so she blinded them as she was as beautiful as her mother and her mother had a blinding beauty and she disfigured them somewhat and trapped them down there and they tried to get Justine and and kill her and yeah it's it is a really, really great DLC. I am... yeah. I suppose that covers everything. So, yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.